Troubleshooting Step 1 Steps to take with an adequate ECG signal amplitude If the ECG QRS amplitude is less than the signal quality indicator height, the user will check to make sure the electrodes being used are within the expiration date and the contact sponge is completely saturated with gel. Select a different lead view on the 3880 as leads 1, 2, and 5 tend to have the highest QRS amplitudes. If the signal is still inadequate for MRI scanning, the user will then reprep the patient's skin above the RA or R and LA or L electrodes, take two new wet gel electrodes, and place them approximately an inch above the RA or R and LA or L electrodes and reattach the lead wires. If the ECG amplitude issues continue, the user will remove all electrodes from the patient, reprep the patient's skin, and reapply new electrodes. Troubleshooting Step 2.1 Steps to take when ECG is erratic during certain MRI sequences The user must ensure the RL or N lead wire is in working order and not damaged. The user will switch lead selection on the monitor to access a different view of the heart that is compatible with the scanning direction. Next, minimize the distance between each lead wire by bunching them together, avoiding any large gaps between wires as shown. Tape the lead wires to the patient to minimize vibrations. If a certain sequence consistently provides gradient noise on the waveform, the 3880 provides a tool to record the gradients onto a USB drive to submit to Iratamed. To record, ensure that the patient application has optimal QRS amplitude and follow steps one through three from video two. Insert a non-magnetic USB drive into the rear of the 3880 and enter the raw ECG recording feature in the service mode menu. Press record prior to starting the MRI sequence and take notes of the MRI scan protocols. When the scan concludes, stop the recording and provide the files to Iratamed's technical support team. Troubleshooting Step 2.2 Troubleshooting only with certain lead views The user will then check to make sure that the lead wires associated with the particular lead view are securely attached to the electrode. Also check to make sure the lead wires are securely inserted into the EPOD and are not loose. Finally, if the issue persists, replace the lead wires. Broken lead wires often have an ECG trace with no baseline. Troubleshooting Step 3 ECG trace changes when patient is inside the MRI bore. Blood contains iron, and the blood inside the MRI scanner creates a small signal, and it is normal for ECG trace to change appearance on the patient monitor screen as a magnetic field increases. This phenomenon is referred to as the MHD effect, or flow artifact. The stronger the magnetic field, the more potential for an elevated T wave. No further actions are needed if the heart rate counter or gating performance is not affected by the elevated T wave. Troubleshooting Step 4 Heart rate counter is detecting T wave. When blood flow artifact is represented in an elevated T wave due to the MHD effect when a patient is inside the MRI bore, try moving the RA or R and LA or L electrodes down the rib cage in 2.5 centimeters or one inch increments until the waveform is acceptable. Troubleshooting step five. ECG waveform disappears when patient enters the MRI bore. It is possible that certain MRI systems can disrupt the wireless signal between the EPOD and the 3880, causing enough signal delay that the ECG trace will not be displayed. Some human bodies can absorb RF, so try creating some distance between the EPOD and the patient. Use a towel or positioning pad to separate. Ensure the 3880 is mounted on the bed, pole, or cart. Move the 3880 closer to the EPOD's line of sight. Move the 3880 further down the MRI table until the communication is reestablished. For more information, visit www.iratamed.com. For technical support, please call 407-677-8022.